So about a week or so ago, I typed up, uploaded onto DeviantArt, and then through the uh, Windows capturing option on Cyber Power Director, uploaded here onto YouTube, a little bit of an essay, a uh, document, if you will, on you know what I think would happen if Mr. Internet Man's Mystic Makeover series and AZ Ant Dash Zarison or Zarison's uh, Morphicus character and series were adapted into animated um, or live action series or movies. Now I'll provide a link to those in the description to the video at least, as well as to the Divinar area to where you can look at. Um, I would uh, I would basically suggest, and I'll probably put it there, the .pdf file version of what I wrote up. Now, the reason I bring this all up, though, is because there's something else that I thought could benefit from an adaptation into animated or live-action form, whether it's a series or a movie. That, of course, is both... Uh, metamorphosized to malleability, which I've talked about before here on this channel, and the Becoming Unlimited series, or just the Unlimited series, both done by Michelle, known as Jacqueladore, um, or Jacqueladore on uh, DeviantArt. And both these stories are really, really interesting, uh, funny at times, mischievous when it comes to certain characters. Um, they can have some drama in them, there's no doubt about it. It also has some, you know, when it comes to metamorphosis to malleability, also can have some action, adventure, espionage, if you will. And Becoming Unlimited, uh, that series of stories, you know, again, just like, um, as she likes to call it for short, M2M, uh, Becoming Unlimited has sort of a similar vibe, but it's more of an emotional kind of growth kind of thing. Like, it's a fantasy that hybrids mischief, comedy, and, um, you know, a bit of drama and um, intrigue, basically. It's one of those kind of like, I guess you could say it's kind of one of those romps that are meant for the late teens, young adults. Uh, demographic or anybody that enjoys that style of story with an intriguing twist here and there. And when I look at these two series, I look at two that just like with the ones I mentioned before, that have the potential to really do well in an animated or live action adaptation environment, whether it's a series or a movie. Now with metamorphosized to malleability, that is one that right now she is um, currently, at, uh, she's currently, from a written standpoint, sitting at 180 chapters or shifts, as she calls it, uh, currently. And this here, out of, and, and this story, I'll tell you this, and I've mentioned it before, out of all the 180 uh, chapters that she has um, uploaded, each of them feels unique different, sometimes very mischievous, fun-loving, comedic, but when it's time to get serious and all that, they get serious. They get very espionage-wise, they get very action-adventure, they get very dramatic at times. You know, the, the story series just runs the whole gambit. And what's interesting is that sometimes, depending on the scenario, she divides a chapter or a shift into two different plots. Like sometimes she'll start with what is the main plot, plot A, involving the characters of Briella, her girlfriend Crystal, uh, their friend Ilana or Lena, and her boyfriend Vic. And then the second plot afterwards, plot B, uh, which is like an entirely different section uh, divided, like it's like in half. It's like the first half is plot A, and then you scroll down this plot B. Uh, plot B will sometimes deal with uh, other characters that are related to the situation that have an investment into what Briella has become and obviously are doing what they can to either protect Briella and those associated with her because of what she you know, is now. Or it focuses sometimes on those that want to capture Briella. They want to capture her and try to dissect her or try to find out what she is so she can, or so they can basically cover it for themselves. 
So yeah, this metamorphosized malleability for 180 shifts, uh, chapters, if you will, with a few one-offs here and there because of holiday reasons and things like that, like Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, you name it. Like I said, it's, it's been a fun romp. And I could definitely see it doing well as an animated live-action um, adaptation, whether it's a movie or a series. Because one of the things that's interesting uh, that takes place... Uh, earlier on um, in the story series, series, and I've mentioned this before, is as Brielle is learning her abilities and trying to master them, one of the lessons she learns and does master is keeping her self-identity. That's right. She, you know, in earlier chapters and shifts, she basically has to learn to keep herself, basically she had trouble, I should say, keeping her self-identity, but later on she would learn to master it to the point that she'd be able to keep it even if she decides she's going to split into different parts of herself to be in different areas all at once or at certain times. But earlier on in the series, she had a difficulty, you know, you know, doing that because sometimes she would lose herself to whatever form she was in, depending on the length of time. Like, for example, she became a blanket to keep her friend Ilana or Elena uh, warm and comfort, uh, w warm and comfortable after you know she had too much to drink, and because she spent the night, you know, as a blanket keeping her friend safe. And she was still learning about her powers and everything. She lost her she lost her self identity temporarily to the blanket form, to where she thought she was nothing more than just a blanket. And then one of the more interesting scenarios is when she became a dog, called herself Maggie, and for a time it looks like she was completely gone until finally, you know, it took the strength of her friend Ilana to bring her out of it. And again, these were all done, this all happened basically in the early stages of the series, but now, 180 shifts later, she has learned not only to master that at completely, well, she had, you know, what I'm trying to say is not only has she learned to master that completely, but she's gotten to a point that, like I said, she could divide herself into separate uh, different entities and she'd still be in control of herself. But... What I was trying to get at here is that that basically is a good example of what could be, um, I, I guess you could say, inserted into an animated or live action series or movie as a great story development by having whoever would voice or play her friend kind of trying to... Um, tell her, hey, you may, you might want to be careful about, you know, the length of time you take, you know, being in certain forms or certain identities because you might lose yourself. I mean, there's even one time where she basically comes on to one of the repairmen that comes to estimate, you know, how much. Uh, land they're going to have to work on to build an expansion onto her house, and she does, and she decides to take on the the role of a secretary or assistant, a seduct, a very sultry, seductive assistant that basically has a good time, if you know what I mean, with the guy. And then she changes back and realizing, oh my God, what did I do? Because she had lost herself to the identity she had adopted. But once again, like I said, as time went on in the stories, she has learned to master this uh, phase. But when you look at the series itself, overall, if you have time to read through them, it definitely, like I said, sets itself up well to be adapted. And I think it would be adapted very, very well. And I think a lot of people would enjoy it, whether it's a series or a movie. And again, one of the main concepts, you know, as I mentioned in the previous video where I talked about, some, uh, talked about the other two in a similar situation, the other two uh, stories, uh, basically one of the main plot points or subplot. Uh, subplot points is you could have a friend, maybe of parents that know about the power, um, kind of, well, mainly in this case, a friend, but maybe inevitably the parents down the line find out about her power, and maybe you have the dad or you have the mom or you have the BFF kind of be like, hey, you got to be careful about what you do because, you know, you might lose yourself. 
especially if she shows that she can divide herself into different, you know, clone, into different versions of herself, like twin herself, if you will. I could see maybe, let's say the parents find out, the mother being like, hey, you might want to be careful because you might lose yourself to this identity split. Like one of your clones might want to be their own person eventually, and that could, you know, lead to some trouble. Overall, I think metamorphosis to malleability could definitely work as a, you know, a very well adapted animated series or movie or even live action in, as well uh, down the line. Now I know we're going to get a Plastic Man or in this case Plastic Woman movie um, in the future by Warner Brothers in DC. The only question is how, what do they do with it? How far are they going to go with that uh, in the, in, um, as time goes on as they work towards that? Now the other series that Michelle uh, works on that has a you know long, that has the second longest shelf life um, around is the Unlimited series. Now as I mentioned before, the Unlimited series is really interesting because it focuses around a guy, and I talked about this in a review of the latest chapter. It focuses around a guy named Isaac who gains basically, as it's described, clay face like abilities that allows him to shape shift into whatever he wants or whoever he wants or even melt down into a puddle of goop, oop, or a puddle uh, just to relax or even try to replicate a, a laminated floor or something. And what happens as time goes on is he turns himself into these different personas, mostly feminine personas. And in the chapter that was before the one I reviewed, um, if you will, called uh, entitled Stalking Unlimited, he ends up suffering the consequences of his decision making of you know going into these different personas and not inserting some kind of control over them because they end up developing a life of their own and literally split from him. They basically split apart to where it seems that at the end of that chapter, you know, he ceases to be, but we find out in the recent chapter called Jealousy Unlimited that he did survive and that he could feel and see what each of them are doing. Well, at least one of them, that being Cindy, who later on he does reconnect with and basically ensures her that they will always be part of each other no matter what, which means he'll be bringing her out whenever he needs to. The catch, though, is the other female persona he created called Mokata, basically named after the major in Ghost in the Shell. And as we find out, and I mentioned this in the review, as we find out, uh, she's not very fond of Isaac, if you will, because she feels he's too much of a coward. And Isaac basically ensures Cindy, now that they're you know, combined back together, you know, they're basically kind of mostly together again, with the exception of Mokata, that you know, even if she refuses, you know, they will start a life anew, as, a, as someone new, as someone different. But we'll see what happens in the next chapter, but to me, the Unlimited series is another great example of a of a story series that I think would work well. It would. Ha it. I mean, you th throw in the whole comedic and mischievous, you know, aspect of it, and that makes it work in the long run, no matter what. But then you also throw in the fact that again, you have that drama. You have that, you know, kind of drama and intrigue that you know has become very popular with late teens, young adults, and even adults my age nowadays. You know, you throw that in there, you mix it all together, you make this hop hodge of it, if you will. And it, and it seemingly obviously works very well. Because now, you look at the latest chapter and the way it ends, and obviously they're gonna, and obviously it ends in a way to where, yeah, they're going to try to talk to Mokata to get her to reunite physically with them, but if not, they're just gonna let her be, live her life, and do what they have to do, who on their own. So it's gonna be interesting what that chapter has to offer, but you know, stuff like that. I think would work very well. I mean, you could even throw in a best friend or something like that, 
as you know, down the line, who find out about the powers you know that Isaac has, and like I've mentioned before, with metamorphosis to malleability in the other two series, you can have that best friend, maybe even the parents, one of them at least, acknowledge to them, "Hey, you keep doing this, you're going to lose your self identity." You know, especially if, let's say, the best friend or the parent witnesses them turning into said person and acting totally different, un, you know, unbeknownst to, you know, the real them, if you know what I mean. So, becoming unlimited at all the limited series, I think, would work very, very well because it has all those aspects you would want in a series. So overall, in the end, I think just like with, you know, the Mystic Makeover series and the Morphica series, I think Metamorphosis to Malleability and Becoming the Becoming Unlimited series, both by Michelle, aka Jack of the Door, I think would work very well, you know, in animated or live action adaptations as either movies or series. And not only do I think they would look very well, I think people would be drawn to them and they would want more out of these series because of, you know, basically the combination, the perfect mix, if you will, of generals that runs the gambit in both of them. But let me know what you guys think. Which ones do you think would work better as a movie as a, and, and as a, or as a series? And uh, check out uh, the uh, stories down below as well as the video. And I will talk to you later, guys. I'm gonna give me something to eat right now because I haven't had anything. I haven't had anything yet, just yet today. So let me know what your thoughts are. Comment down below. Like the video. Live chatting during the premiere. And I'm out.